eat fat, get thin, why the fat we eat is the key to sustained weight loss and vibrant health by Mark Hyman. What is the single best thing you can do for your health, weight, and longevity? Eat more fat. That's right. Eat more fat to lose weight, feel good, prevent heart disease, diabetes, dementia, and cancer, and live longer. How could that be true? Haven't we been told by every health and nutritional professional leading medical associations and our government to eat less fat because fat makes us fat and causes heart disease. We have faithfully followed this advice in America over the last 50 years and yet are fatter and sicker than ever. It is true that the fat on our bodies is making us sick and causing us to die too soon. But the seemingly logical leap that the fat we eat creates the fat on our bodies and clogs our arteries is wrong. The whole idea, which we have bought wholesale, is scientifically untrue. In fact, the science shows the exact opposite. When you look closely at the data, it supports the idea that if you eat fat, you get thin and reverse heart disease and type 2 diabetes while preventing dementia, cancer, and other disease processes. The reality is that the more fat you eat, the more fat you lose, and the better your body functions. Mark Hyman MD From eat fat, get thin. For the great enemy of truth is very often not the lie, deliberate, contrived, and dishonest, but the myth, persistent, persuasive, and unrealistic. Too often we hold fast to cliches of our forebears. We subject all facts to a prefabricated set of interpretations. We enjoy the comfort of opinion without the discomfort of thought. John F. Kennedy, a calorie is not a calorie. The conventional wisdom doesn't stack up against the emerging research that shows us that a calorie is not a calorie. In a vacuum or a lab, calories from all foods release the same amount of energy when burned. Whether the food is coconut oil or honey, but when you eat, Foods have to go through your body, and they can have profoundly different effects on your hormones, brain chemistry, and metabolism. Fat calories burn differently than sugar calories do. Fat calories speed up your metabolism. Fats have to be burned and are not easily stored because they don't spike insulin, the fat storage hormone. Fat works on the brain to cut your appetite, so you eat less overall during the day. On the other hand, sugar and carb calories do exactly the opposite. They spike insulin, promote fat storage, and are quickly laid down as dangerous. Deli and organ fat, they slow your metabolism and increase hunger and cravings. Amounts of scientific research support this perspective. This hormonal or metabolic hypothesis of weight gain supports the idea that it is the composition and quality of the foods you eat and the hormones and biochemistry they subsequently trigger that determine whether you lose or gain weight. In other words, it is not how much you eat but what you eat that controls the metabolic switches. The surprising truth about fat and heart disease. The current scientific consensus is that total fat in your diet does not affect your risk of heart disease or being overweight. And yet many doctors and dietitians still hold on to this outdated idea. It is still embedded in our popular culture too with thousands of low-fat foods still on grocery store shelves and menus. I recently had a patient who struggled with weight for 30 years. She was a low-fat fanatic. Her diet consisted of low-fat, high-sugar salad dressings, low-fat yogurt, and bread. She steamed her veggies and didn't add olive oil, and ate lots of fruit. She avoided nuts, seeds, avocados, and all other fatty foods all with no results. I recommended healthy fats like avocados and coconut oil, and despite her fat phobia she followed my plan. In just 4 days, she lost 6 pounds and her energy skyrocketed. Her brain fog disappeared, her joints didn't hurt, and her postnasal drip stopped. She continued to lose weight on the program without starvation or fat or calorie deprivation. Good fats versus bad fats. One of the main authors of the study Darius Masafarian from Tufts University had previously published a study that recommended swapping out saturated fats for polyunsaturated vegetable oils. Now he moved toward this conclusion. Current evidence does not clearly support cardiovascular guidelines that encourage high consumption of polyunsaturated fatty acids and low consumption of total saturated fats. This turns things upside down doesn't it? Let's review. Saturated fats in your blood that cause heart attacks come from eating sugar and carbs, not fat. Saturated fats that come from dairy, 
and butter show a reduced risk of heart disease. Omega-6 fats from vegetable oils show no benefit and may increase risk of heart attacks. Omega-6 fats from poultry, eggs, and beef seem to be protective. Omega-3 fats from fish are the most protective. The conclusion, avoid most vegetable oils, eat more butter, fish, chicken, eggs and meat, and stay away from sugar and carbs. Boy, did we get this wrong. Now let's take a quick look at the good fats. Extra virgin olive oil, lesser than liquid gold is what Hyman calls it. Fun fact, did you know oil is extracted from olives in multiple pressings? Yep, apparently the first squeeze is the best, hence you want extra virgin oil. Other things to consider organic cold pressed is desk and store it somewhere dark and cool note not by the stove i just moved ours to the pantry away from the stove extra virgin coconut oil coconut oil are super healthy great for cooking and dr hyman calls mct oil super fuel for your cells fats from whole foods like avocados nuts and seeds yum tip Eat the nuts and seeds raw and soak them overnight to help remove some anti-nutrients. The bad fats, veggie oils, corn oil, soybean oil, canola oil, safflower oil, sunflower oil. Vegetable oils were almost unknown in the food supply at the turn of the 20th century. Going PEGAN, a study of any diet of whole foods, vegan or paleo, will do far better than the awful processed industrial diet. But what happens when you compare two whole foods? good quality vegan diets, one low fat and one high fat. This has been done, and a high fat, high protein, low carb, low glycemic vegan diet perform better for weight loss and lowering cholesterol than the low fat vegan diet that avoided nuts, seeds, and avocados. What's a quality carb? A quality carbohydrate will contain both phytonutrients and fiber. It will be whole and unprocessed and have had a very short distance from field to fork. How many processing steps does broccoli need to get to your plate? Hardly any. Just cut it off the stalk, wash off the dirt, steam or saute, and voila, it's on your plate. If your food took a pit stop in a factory, you might want to reconsider eating it unless you can still recognize it, like an artichoke in a kennel jar, or a nut that has been removed from its shell. A quality carb will not contain refined flours, additives, preservatives, fillers, sweeteners, dyes, or any other ingredient normally found in processed foods. Bottom line, if you can't pronounce an ingredient or recognize it as originating from nature, don't eat it. Symptoms, causes, sinks, mops, leaves, and paint. Disregarding the underlying causes and treating only risk factors is somewhat like mopping up the floor around an overflowing sink instead of turning off the faucet. When the lifestyle causes are addressed, Patients are often able to get better without medication or surgery. The quality of our diet matters most. Real, whole, fresh, unadulterated, unmodified foods. Those must be the starting point. Mark Hyman, MD. The National Institute of Health spends $800 million a year trying to discover the cause of obesity. Hmm, could it be that the average American every year consumes 29 pounds of french fries, 23 pounds of pizza, 24 pounds of ice cream, 57 gallons of soda, 24 pounds of artificial sweeteners. We consume about 152 pounds of sugar, 146 pounds of white flour, and 600 pounds of dairy per person each year in this country. Doesn't seem like any great mystery to me why we're in an obesity crisis. Mark Hyman, MD. 